Hi, and a big welcome back to the channel. I know that hundreds of you have been waiting months and months for this very special episode today, so it brings me great pleasure to present the true accounts of the Great Depression era, not the made-up accounts that we read now in modern-day history books or the propaganda. No, these are the true accounts which have been sourced from five historical books from the time, they're in print at the time, combined with six, not two or three, but six personal diaries of people who lived through the Great Depression. And the reason for this presentation today is to show you the similarities between the Great Depression era and today, what's actually going on today, so that you can see the patterns as we cross-reference the two events. Uh, also, I'll touch upon 1873, the Panic of 1873, and you'll see that this is just history repeating over and over again. Although I could just read out these entries in sequential numerical order, instead I've decided to categorize these entries for you so that it will be a lot easier for you to follow. So here's the big question that I want you to keep on the top of your mind as you go through this video. Do these entries predict a greater depression just waiting there for us on the horizon? This video today took me over 300 hours of research and development work, not even including the filming, the editing, and everything else that goes along with it. So if you do find value in this video, I'd really appreciate if you click the like button and share this video with your network. And with that said, remember as always to make your voice heard and leave a comment below in the comment section. But apart from that, it's time for you and I to now go on a journey back to 1929. The topic we're going to cover now then is housing. After a rapid increase in prices, houses that were purchased just two years earlier now sell at less than half of their value at public auction. But there are no buyers in sight. The owners seem shaken. They know they must get a sale or they will lose the house to the bank. Many regret having purchased a home when it was obvious that the prices were so high. We've seen a mass exodus from the city to farms and rural locations. The people that got land early were able to work the land and feed themselves and their families. Many who stayed in the city, waiting for government relief, starved to death. Our house has lost close to 40% of its value. I was a damned fool. The home has become more important again, with less external spending and more internal spending for the home. Now this is interesting because much of what I've just read here from these diary entries align with many of the things I've been talking about recently about these rapid rises in home prices and how I believe there will be a collapse in home prices in the near future. And really what he's talking about here is no different to what happened in the 08 crisis, 2008 crisis, where house prices went to record highs and then crashed down by a very, very large percentage where people couldn't get rid of their houses for love nor money. There was just no way to offload these houses that were in negative equity. So these entries are not a surprise. They shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. Uh, this is just history repeating. And if you recall some of my housing market analysis videos, I've been talking about how we're having this mass exodus from the cities to more rural locations. This has been going on for about nine months now, and I expect this to continue onwards into the near future. In terms of the risk of people in the big cities starving to death if we had another greater depression uh, today, I think this is a lot lower in terms of risk level because you may have seen the documentaries, you may have seen these undercover videos on YouTube right now. I certainly have of all of these government institutions and warehouses stockpiling food from the floor to the ceiling. I mean, we're talking thousands of tons of food um, strategically placed in different locations. So 
It says to me perhaps the government uh, is already aware of some of the issues that might come about, but this is just speculation on my behalf. Coming on to the house becoming a home again, more people spending money and uh, spending time at home. We've already seen this right now as a result of this crisis we've been going through throughout 2020. People have been putting a lot of focus on the home, the family home as it has become again. A lot of people who had bought these small studio apartments in city center locations are now looking to move out. In fact, we have the data, apartments and condos and things like that already have seen huge drops uh, with a lot of them empty. A lot of people don't want to live there anymore. So we're seeing a lot of similarities already just from these few entries. If you're enjoying this video so far, please click the like button. I really appreciate that. Helps the video to get ranked. Subscribe to the channel, but more importantly with this video, please share it with your network, whether that's over social media or you're sending it to your friends on WhatsApp or whatever you're gonna do. Please share this video as widely as you possibly can to forewarn more people of what may be coming. Vacation resorts were hit the hardest. People expected them to recover after a year or two, but many of the hotels still remain empty years later. There are empty homes everywhere. Even though families need housing, people simply have no income in order to pay rent. Some of these houses are even falling apart, but the banks won't budge. They are waiting for better days to sell, my friend tells me. So his friend was the manager of a, a bank at the time. He references him throughout some of the entries. The banks seem to own every other house right now. The banks repossessed a heavy amount of real estate and will hold it on their books for better days, I'm told. Again, a lot of similarities to right now. What's been happening? Vacation resorts, hotels, the service accommodation sector, anything to do with tourism has been badly, badly hit. In fact, just last month, the media had a frenzy about this hotel. I'm not sure which hotel it was, but it was originally built for a huge sum of money, hundreds of millions. And in the end, they have just accepted an offer for a peppercorn amount of what it originally cost to build. And we're seeing this a lot. A lot of hospitality businesses, a lot of large hotels and resorts that are on the market right now simply cannot sell because they are so difficult to sell. People don't want to buy them. Corporations don't want to buy them because they are a liability in this environment. In regards to there being empty homes everywhere, this is something that I often argue with experts about because people say there aren't enough homes for the amount of people. Well, the same was true throughout the 1930s. There was a lot more people than there were homes it didn't make any difference. If people couldn't afford the rent or the mortgages, as it were, but it was mainly the rents, then the home stood empty. Right now it's slightly different because we have these eviction bans on tenants, but I do believe that eventually these will come to an end. The same with the mortgages as well, these mortgage breaks that have been allowed to be given. In terms of the comment about the banks owning every other house right now, you might think, oh yeah, that was back then. But actually, if you remember some of my videos more recently, the Federal Reserve, so we'll talk specifically about the United States here, the Federal Reserve now owns more than 40% of all the mortgages in the United States. So that means for every four out of 10 of you watching, it's highly likely that the Federal Reserve owns your mortgage and therefore owns your home. And people say, no, they don't own my home. Uh, yes, they do. Until you have paid back every penny that's owed, every dollar on that mortgage, the Federal Reserve or the person that holds the mortgage, the first charge on the mortgage, owns your home. So, of course, coming through the 1930s, the banks repossessed. They really didn't care about evicting the families that were there, the families that ended up on the street. The banks repossessed the homes because a bank is a for-profit organization. They're not a humanitarian organization. And I personally feel that the same will happen again if we go into a greater depression and it gets quite extreme. Because you've got to look at it like this, the banks would rather throw people out on the streets and repossess and reclaim some of their money 
than they would to let people stay there and for the bank to go into administration to uh, go bankrupt or collapse themselves. Remember what I always say, the banks are not your friends, ladies and gentlemen. Construction of residential property is down 80%. Invest this is the shocking one. Investors have started to demolish their own real estate to avoid paying the high taxes to the government. They cannot collect rent, so they choose demolition over bankruptcy. Now even the large multi-story buildings are being demolished rather than pay the tax. So this entry actually happened later on. The larger investors started to demolish their bigger buildings back then. So people often say, yes, okay, construction was down 80%, but that was in the 1930s. Again, this is nothing to do with the time period. It's to do with the supply and the demand ratio. Even though we have an undersupply of homes in most Western countries, it doesn't matter. If house prices crash, there is now no incentive for the builders, the home builders to go out and build because they won't be able to make a profit. They would go bankrupt themselves. So this will again repeat if we have very heavy losses in the real estate housing market. It's food and the first entry here to bring your attention to is August of 1931. People are growing their own vegetable gardens now for food. Soup kitchens become overrun. There are sometimes seven mouths for one available bowl. Starvation is now common. What many people don't realize is that even if we go back just 100 years, the Roaring Twenties was a period of very high prosperity. But we're taught nowadays that 100 years ago, people were very primitive. Things were very primitive back then. People weren't as intelligent as they are today. I would say to you that that's not quite true. I would say that's more propaganda. In fact, 100 years ago, people were very intelligent. If anything, I would say the only thing that's changed in the last 100 years is knowledge. But the human mind, the human spirit really hasn't changed that much in the last 100 years. So bear this in mind as you go through these entries, because when you hear things such as people were growing their own vegetable gardens or there was starvation, you'll probably look at that and see it as, well, it was 100 years ago, people were very primitive. That isn't the case. Next. The butcher is telling people that the government are paying farmers to destroy their produce. I don't believe it. They wouldn't, not while children are starving to death. Next entry, not much longer. I saw some farmers today pouring gallons of milk into the river. It made me fall to my knees and ask, Lord, why is the government doing this to us? And just on the language that I'm going to be using, some language I have altered slightly just because some of the words many people won't know what they mean in today's age, but other things such as references to Lord or God or things like that, I've left these references in throughout. Next entry, not much longer after. It's true, the government has been paying farmers to destroy their livestock and produce at a time when our children are starving. Very interesting, people back then believed everything the government said. They believed the government was extremely trustworthy and they would never do anything to jeopardize people. But actually the truths that came about during the Great Depression were more worrying than people actually knew. People thought the government would never pay farmers to destroy their farm produce or to kill, uh, slaughter the livestock and bury them in ditches. But this is exactly what was happening. The government did this, they tried to hide it from the people in order to raise the prices at the time. Next entry. Commodity prices crash by more than 50%. This has had an impact on the farming sector and brought food to all time low prices. But even at these prices, the unemployed could not afford to eat. Food prices are both extremely high and extremely low at the same time. This is not helped by the government deliberately trying to manipulate the prices. The government is trying to increase export prices by reducing the food supply. Farm animals are slaughtered and disposed of in pits. Cotton and wheat is plowed back into the soil. While people are starving, the government is trying to boost the prices of our exports. This is a very shocking diary entry here. A widow offered herself to me today in exchange for food for her children. 
I give her the little food I had and prayed the Lord have mercy on her soul. My own children will go without food tonight. I just heard from the butcher that the animals at the zoo have been slaughtered for food. He has some of the meat. Even though the trees are loaded with fruit, it will go to waste because the fruit cannot be sold. At the same time, thousands are starving. Death is now a daily occurrence for those of us remaining in the cities. This is quite interesting because this again is a pattern that often repeats. During the Great Depression era, the people who fled the big cities and went out to more rural locations tended to survive a lot better than those that stayed in the cities. The cities had poverty and starvation, whereas more rural locations, people started to farm the land again. Any piece of land they had, as long as they had a small plot of land, they could grow vegetables to see them through. Let's move on to unemployment now then. So this entry is from Benjamin Roth. I'm gonna talk about his diary a little bit later and why I feel it's the most powerful diary that I'm gonna recommend that most of you read. Here's the entry. The effects of mass unemployment were not felt straight away. Again, what's happening right now? Then all of a sudden the response was rapid. Car sales dropped by 25% in one month alone. Manufacturers who were overstocked with large overheads began to lay off even more workers. People didn't have money to buy food or pay their bills and businesses couldn't pay their employees. It became a vicious cycle. We are told today that unemployment is now at 25%. This means that 75% are still working, but very few that I know have a job. It's the same thing in the next city along. Many are now questioning the accuracy of this number since no one is working. I think that's very fitting for today because this is what we're constantly fed, the unemployment numbers and the percentages. And yet I've looked into it, many of the experts have looked into the employment, unemployment numbers and we found that the, they just aren't accurate, they aren't true. They're nowhere near the true levels of unemployment numbers because the government statistics omit a large number of people who are unemployed. Again, something else I've been mentioning here, he talks about the effect of the mass unemployment not felt straight away. I've been saying this over and over again. We have furlough in the UK, 80% of wages being paid by the government. We have similar programs around the world. United States government is providing a lot of stimulus, uh, as it were, but, but employment benefits and things like that to yourselves. This can only go on for so long. It really can. The government can only, with the Treasury, Federal Reserve, etc., keep printing and printing or creating more and more currency for a set amount of time. It's simply not true that they can keep going on doing this forever because right now they are devaluing the currency. They're devaluing the US dollar. They can only do this for so long before other countries lose faith in the dollar and start dumping their US dollars back to the United States. He also, of course, talked about manufacturers who were overstocked. I've talked about this a lot. This course is deflation, where the prices start to come down quite rapidly. At the same time, this causes employment scarring so that uh, employers have to start laying off more employees, more staff, because they're not getting as much money in, their profit margins are shrinking. So of course they have to cut the biggest overheads first, which is employees. Next entry, wages have crashed down as much as 50% as people are willing to work for whatever they can get these days. Most people now only work on alternative days and the best case I've seen is a 25% cut in wages. Most people will agree to any working conditions now just so they can buy food. Here's an entry from 1931. 75% of the workforce are now on part-time hours. Can you imagine that? 75% of the workforce, so that would include you unless you were very lucky, being on part-time hours, not having a full-time job anymore. So imagine a cut of 50% of your hours, and on top, imagine a cut of 50% to your wage. That means that you or your family home could be relying on just 25% of your current income. 
I just don't think that most people understand this because the majority of people in the Western world don't just live on 100% of their wages, they also live on credit and debt as well. So they spend even more of their wages. So imagine going down to just 25%. This would be an absolute disaster. Well-educated people, including those with university degrees, have been out of work for years now. They will take any job they can find. School teachers have not been paid in months. Even professional office men and women who still have good jobs no longer eat their lunch in town and instead pack a lunch with them they prepared at home. Florida and California hit really hard. Interesting entries. Actually, if we look at the 08 crisis as well, Florida, California, again, both hit extremely hard. It actually shows the worst unemployment were in these states. This is where it gets a little bit more extreme later on. Armies of unemployed marched towards the capital for relief. The army was constantly called in to dispel protesters and rioters. They are brutes, states this diary entry. They use bayonets and tear gas. So bayonets are large knives that go on to the, the end of rifles, for those of you that don't know. They use bayonets and tear gas and even burn down a shanty town to dispel the people to leave. With nothing to lose, the protesters sleep in the streets. In December of 1932, machinery and electricity started replacing jobs. Many people are scared they will be fired and will never find a job again. Again, very interesting the similarities here because what are we having now? It's not electricity replacing jobs, it's AI, artificial intelligence, it's robotics, it's self-service counters at the supermarket. So I think we're just, again, looping back around in this cycle, which we can track back many, many times. So then it was electricity, now it's AI and robotics. Very interesting. Here's an entry from November of 1933. The NRA plan is failing and employers are laying off more staff. The NRA was the National Recovery Administration. This was an idea to help people get back to work, to help the economy recover. It was supposed to be this great idea of the president at the time. Um, but if you look at some of the entries, it's very different from the history books. The diary entries say that it was a disaster and people didn't want it. A lot of people tried to warn the president that you can't manipulate these things, but the president didn't listen. 1938, we're told that unemployment has now gone back to 20% again. The cycle has started all over again. The NRA is to blame. So bear in mind, this is 1938 now, this entry, and this started, all started in 1929. So already nine years they've been going through this crisis. What the government said was an unemployment crisis that had ended was just the beginning of a new one. Again, we're seeing a lot of these entries saying how people had started to lose faith in the government, and yet many people continued to vote for the president. This was a very shocking thing, which I, once I looked into it, I, I was very surprised, and I think you will be as well. There was something in the Great Depression called dance marathons. Uh, let me read this out to you. The popularity of dance marathons began in 1923. <laughs> Initially, participants competed in order to break the 27-hour record. But later on, people began to compete to win prizes which could range from money to publicity and food. Can you imagine that? Doing a dance marathon for 20, 30 hours, etc. to get food. It just shows you the truth of just how bad it was in these time periods. Dance marathons were a huge hit during the Great Depression as they provided contestants and spectators food, shelter, and the opportunity to earn cash prizes at a time when many people needed a meal and free entertainment. One of the entries here talks about this. Uh, this man writes, I feel sorry for these poor souls taking part in the dance marathons. The newspapers say that people love to spectate but I receive no joy from seeing people collapse from starvation and desperation. The dance marathon is barbaric. 
I just heard today that a man collapsed and died on the dance floor after dancing for more than 80 hours straight. It also says a lot about the thinking of the times. When people get to desperate times, they go to desperate measures, as we know. To actually enjoy watching people dance and collapsing and even someone dying, which was a big headline, that tells you some of the mindset of people during this time to actually enjoy watching things like this. Well, that concludes part one of this series. In part two, I'll be talking about the banking system, the financial system, and exactly what happened during the Great Depression. And in part three, I'll move on to a whole host of new topics, such as gold confiscation, business collapses, exactly what happened with the business cycle, politics, as well as a whole host of other things, such as the mindset of people and what happened during these times. Thank you so much for watching today. Please remember to click the like button, subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of this first part of the series. And of course, as always, share this video with your friends, your family, and those closest to you. Thank you so much. Take care. God bless.